Well, spring's here. It's April 2022, and I've got a few things to do on the Saab uh, now. It's nice. Spring is here. It's finally a little more comfortable to work out in the garage. Uh, I've got a little over 50 degrees Fahrenheit and oh, about 12 degrees uh, centigrade here in the garage. Just about how I like it. It gets too much warmer and it can get uncomfortable, so this is nice uh, working temperatures. With the pandemic the last uh, two years, I really haven't driven the, the Saab much. I've kept it on the road, but I've only driven it uh, a couple hundred miles every season. And um, in the fall, uh, this past fall, the last time I drove it, the brake pedal took a lot of pressure uh, applied to, to stop the car so it really felt like it was getting no uh, power brake assist so I've got to diagnose that and uh, repair it and just an update on some may have noticed that I had a 67 Mustang I was working on but uh, just before the pandemic I sold it uh, you know life gets in the way um, some health problems and different things and uh, I was happy I was able to sell it to a man that his uh, young son teenage son um, not old enough to drive yet but they already had a 67 Mustang they were working on for him and then the father decided to get another 67 Mustang project for himself so that they'll have two 67 uh, Mustangs and uh, real nice guy he came by with his son and, and uh, picked the car up so it's going to a good home so to speak. Uh, he's a body man so he, he knows what he's doing. He'll be able to uh, restore uh, the Mustang. So I'm happy about that. So just a little update on that. But today we're back to the Saab and so let's get to it. Now in diagnosing the hard brake pedal there, there's a couple things that are common on these. This is a, a 2001 93 old generation 93. Um, Sometimes the brake boosters will fail on these, but usually when they do, it's kind of gradual. You may hear a little hissing inside the car uh, from the vacuum leak, and also usually it's most noticeable when you first start the car up. Uh, the vacuum has leaked out of the booster, so when you maybe perhaps back up, the first thing you'll notice, it might catch you by surprise, you'll have that stiff brake pedal taking a lot of pressure uh, to stop the car. And, uh, but usually then once the car runs a little bit the pressure will build up in the booster and it may drive normally. As it deteriorates further and the leak becomes worse in the booster uh, then perhaps at that point you may lose all your assist. Now that's a fairly common thing. It's uh, expensive. It's no fun to change and uh, I'm glad I don't think that's my problem here. So the next thing you do is uh, make a visual inspection. And the other thing that's, that's common on these, there's a, you've got uh, this pump here. They don't usually fail, but this is a uh, a vacuum pump. It 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 helps the engine uh, produce more vacuum for the brake booster. And the way it's set up, you've got this uh, vacuum pipe that goes to the intake back here by the throttle body and uh, to the booster up here and to the pump here and as you may see already this has been repaired before this is commonly where they'll they'll snap off because there, there's a couple check valves in the pipe one over here uh, by the intake and the one here by the vacuum pump and commonly it's this one now with some ep epoxy, um, it was able to be repaired before, but it, it only lasts so long and it'll fail again. The other thing I'm um, running into here, this fitting uh, that it, where the um, pipe locks into the vacuum pump, this fitting also will no longer stay in the uh, vacuum pump. It's lost its ability to lock there, so we'll need one of those two and a new vacuum pipe. So just a couple quick things about the parts. Um, 
I was able to locate on eBay uh, from a company down in Norcross, uh, Georgia. They had one made by Pro Pro Parts Sweden. I've had pretty good success uh, with them. I've I've used their fuel pumps and and other things before. Uh, they usually have a reasonable price and and decent quality. So I was able to locate this pipe. Now I, on eBay there was also um, as of April 2022 there was a, a couple sellers with original equipment and they were like over eighty dollars for this but there was a few sellers with uh, this pro parts Sweden part and with the shipping and tax and that's about thirty five dollars or so for that pipe and then the um, what do you call it it's uh, a nipple they're calling it <coughs> excuse me so this one's an original saw part I couldn't find this part on eBay uh, I found it at e euro parts which uh, I've used before they've, they've uh, had different financial problems and kind of um, changed things a bit here and there over the years but they can be a good source for saw parts and so I was able to find the, the nipple there It's in storage and shipping that it's, it's got a little bit out of shape in that but it's gonna have to go this is gonna go up to the, the booster and this over to the intake and then this over to the vacuum pump kind of like so but it's flexible and is new and I'll be careful with it not to break it again this is usually where they break anyways right here. At least the original equipment ones, that's where they always tend to break. Uh, like so. Uh, there's one of these there's one of these nipples in the vacuum pump and then and this which is I'm changing because this one lost it won't be lock in anymore in the vacuum pump. There's also one of these in the intake. And just so you know, the way it works is see that pipe's locked in there. You just press down on the red collar and then it'll pull out. To put it in is all you do is push it in and, it, and it's locked. So when, when I go to take it off the intake, it's good to know that because if you try to just pull it out of there and force it, you, you may break it, but just press down the red collar and you'll be able to pull it out of the intake. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> uh, I wasn't able to I had to, I just you know, couldn't find it. I was forced to pay, I think, a little over thirty dollars with the sh with the shipping for it. And it comes with this already in it, but you just can discard that. Uh, I've never really looked closely at these nipples. Uh, before uh, and trying to see what actually keeps it locked locked in there it could very well be just there's an o-ring on it it could be as simple as just being held in by the o-ring I'm not sure but this old o-ring is hard and doesn't exert any pressure to keep it locked in there so it, it could just be a matter of if you had the right size o-ring and replace the o-ring on here uh, you may not need to get a new one just FYI there so I'm gonna I'm just I'm gonna put a little lube on there and then put that in the vacuum pump the new one so I, I just put a little high temperature grease on the, the o-ring on the nipple there That's it. Locked in there. 
Now back here by the intake, the throttle cable, there's a, a wire tie that's tied, tying the um, two together, the pipe. We'll take that off. Kind of hard to see here. I'm going to press the red collar down here and pull the pipe out. Okay, nothing to it. And we've got to pull the pipe out of the booster. There we go. So here's our original they match up pretty well there. I'm gonna uh, again put a little high temperature grease on there to make it easier to pop into the booster. Really not much to this as you see. I think I'll put it in the, in the booster first. And then I'm gonna put it in the nipple and the intake. And then finally Vacuum pump. And that's it. I don't really know if it's necessary, but I may put a, a, a wire tie as they had it. It looked like it was a factory wire tie from the uh, throttle cable to the pipe. But that's it. All set. The only uh, last thing would be when you first start it up after doing it, uh, just give it a moment for the uh, booster to to build up sufficient vacuum again before you put it in gear. So just so you don't get surprised with a, a very stiff brake pedal. That's it. The new brake pipe. I'm going to go ahead and, and save these original parts. You just never know with the, the way things are going, supply chain, disruptions and whatever. Um, I'm going to save it because um, they can be repaired. Like so, I could put some new epoxy on there um, but anyways so I'm going to save that I'm going to save the original nipple let's put them in a the drawer probably never use them again but I've got, a, I've got a couple 
breather hoses here. This is a project for another day. Um, I got these a little while ago because the ones on the car are just getting to that point. These have got to be periodically replaced. And also I've got an oil leak that I need to diagnose. And I may take the valve cover off and make sure that there's some passageways inside the valve cover that affect the functionality of these um, crankcase breathing system. And if those uh, passages in the valve cover are plugged, they, they can cause um, excess crankcase pressure. And then that can in turn even cause uh, oil leak, be a source of oil leak. So uh, I think I'm going to kind of do all that together, diagnose the oil leak, and uh, redo the breather system. Um, there's a few other parts related to there's a, a, a vacuum hose with a check valve in it that's important to the functionality of the of the breather system for the crankcase. So anyways that'll be my next project.